Harvest Church, you guys ready to worship? Everyone watching online, our Elkhart campus, we're so excited you are with us. Let's worship.
that's your prayer tonight, can you just begin to lift your voice and say, spring up a well, spring up a well, spring up a well. I want to go all the way in. I want a taste of your goodness. I want a taste of your goodness. I don't want to just get my toe in, but I want to get drenched in your glory. I want to get drenched in your glory. You make us alive. You make us alive, Jesus. Just keep saying, I want to go all the way in, God. I say yes to you, Jesus. I say yes to your will for my life, God. I say yes to your plan, yes to your purpose, God. Even when it doesn't look like what I imagine for myself, God, I'll still say yes to you, Jesus. I'll still say yes to your will, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we lift your name, Lord. We say
Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. In the book of Corinthians, it says that every promise in Jesus is yes and amen. There is no problem with our Jesus. He's not holding anything back. He longs to get everything of the kingdom to us every second of every day. And all he longs and desires from us is that we say yes to him. You know, it, it says when we come into his presence, there isn't an English word that describes it and brings it into proper perspective. It means there's nothing in the Greek and Hebrew either that brings it to English. His presence means coming to God face to face. Tonight, we've come face to face with our God again. And we're saying, yes, God, not our will, but your will be done in earth as you've already planned and prepared it right here in earth and heaven together. Tonight's our night. I'm so grateful and thankful that we're here on this Wednesday. It's going to be a wonderful Wednesday. It already is in Jesus. It's going to be one we walk out tonight. We're to say, wow, look what our God has done. He loves us so much, and there's such a yes inside of us to love Him, walk with Him, serve Him, and know Him. Let's give Him our thanks. Let's give Him our praise right now and say yes to our Jesus. Yeah. I know that we've been excited the whole day to get to church tonight because it's Wednesday night at the Harv. And it's always very special for our lives, our children and teenagers. Turn to someone, give them that million dollar smile, you paid for it, and tell them how special they are in Jesus and let's be seated. Hey, before you change cards and who, what your dentist names are, I want to say a great big hello, welcome. We love you to all of our guests that are here tonight at World Harvest Church. So come on, let's give a great big thanks. We're grateful you're here. This is your home. They used to say, why wait for spring? We don't have to, it's now. There's a, on the screen behind me, there's an, a, a VIP text number. And that's who everyone is in this church and especially to our guests that have come to church on this Wednesday night. I would love for you to text that this evening. Our pastor partially would love for you to text that. We want to do all that we can to love you and get you connected right here in the family of World Harvest Church. And there's a gift we have for you. But more important than that, we want to get to know you, love you and your family and make it as easy as we can for us to walk with Jesus together have as a restoring power in our life and be able to reach out and touch those of our world and share his love through us to them. So that's important that we take that time and just do it. Please, if you're saying, I have never done that before, we'll do it tonight. There's no time like now and you are so special and we love you. Come on, give our guests another great big hand because you're no longer guests. You're now part of the family at World Harvest Church. You know, we get this really awesome, exciting step to do right now and that's to minister and to worship and to praise our father god and to build his kingdom with our giving can somebody say a big amen and say i love to give and i love to sow now before we get all caught up and miss something i want to just share a verse that's been rolling around in my heart all day for each one of us isaiah chapter 3 and verse 10 says it this way it says say to the righteous that it shall be good and blessed and best with them and for them. It says, say to the righteous that it shall be good with them. It will be blessed with them. It will be the best for them. Now, I want to ask a question, so can I answer it. How many of you growing up, or even right now, because we all haven't grown up, we're still growing, like to read a book or see a movie that talked about at the very end that they lived happily ever after? the prince and the princess. They'd go through obstacles and mountains and dragons, and they'd have the victory in the end, and they'd ride off into the sunset, and we'd finish it by them living happily ever after. Well, a lot of us, including me, thought that was just a fairy tale or a fantasy, but that really is the heart of our Father God for our lives. 
right now where we live. That's why it says, say to the righteous, it shall be right, it shall be good, it shall be blessed, it shall be well with them. Tonight as we minister and serve and we bring God his tithes and we get to be stewards of how he's blessed us with our resources, I want us to grab this as the seed that we sow that it's time for it to be well with our lives. Not to expect the worst, but to expect the best. We've all fought the battles, the mountains, the enemies, had some victories and had some defeats. And we've also had the dragon in front of us, I'm sure. But tonight, Father God is saying, World Harvest family, I want it to be well with your life. Breaking it down, it means a whole bunch. It means to be blessed, to be joyful, to be happy, to be successful, to be prosperous. But it means two main things right there. Number one, it's talking about an individual who has faced death physically and emotionally at the point of death's door and that God turns it around and gives them health and gives them strength and gives them wholeness in their mind and in their spirit and in their body. God wants to do that tonight as we give. And number two, it talks about the individual that has lost their resources and their finances. And there's been a reverse of losing almost or everything. And that God turns it around and restores all the fortune and restores all the blessing like it had never, ever happened that they lost it. That's what that word means right there in the Hebrew if we bring it out to the English. So tonight, Father God says, I want it to be well with your lives and your families. We're going to minister tonight to Father God by loving him, by sowing. Hey, I'm going to sow my seed towards this harvest in my life that my God wants for me. It is to be well with my life that I expect the best and not the worst. And that I receive from my Father the best and nothing less than that. Of course, on the screen right, be, right behind me there, we all see there's areas that we can give right here in the tabernacle and right online. Let's find out to get the very best tonight that we can give because God wants to give us the very best back. He loves for us to give because there's a harvest tagged on to that gift that we give always waiting for us. And tonight it shall be well with our soul in every area. You might use the envelope that's in front of you in the pocket of the pew. Please use it and fill it out right there. That's, that's for you. There's our text to give that I just want to encourage us not to run through it really quickly, but grab your heart and love affair with Jesus as you sow tonight and say, and realize that Father God's about to give me the very best this evening. This summer will not be the dog days of summer. It's going to be the Jesus days of summer. Getting better and better and better because the path of the, bright, of the righteous gets brighter and brighter. You may be online right there and you're just going to, there's a, that button, you can click that banner and just follow that through. And I would encourage your online family that this is the point not to just relax and sit back, but it's a point to join of love to our Father God and watch Him come through. But as we give Him 30 seconds right here, thank you for your expectation. That's all Father God needs. It's not how good we are, it's how good He is. And I want you to say every day, it shall be well with my life. Father God, this evening we thank you. Jesus, you're so good. We can huff and puff and can't blow the dragon down, but you've already taken care of him. We thank you that it's well because we're righteous in Christ Jesus. And tonight as we say, hey, I've got my very best seed to give and minister to God tonight. You've blessed me this week already. So, Father God, I bring it tonight to the house of God. And I thank you as I sow tonight to bless you, to build your kingdom. That, Father God, that you are making it well with my life in every area. And we thank you for it. Because now restoration has come in Jesus. And everybody said, come on, praise him as you give. It's his time and our time. Let the king of my heart 
be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. You are good. You're good.
when it doesn't make sense he's still good he's still good when everything is falling apart he's still good he's still good when your finances and your relationships and your family it doesn't make sense but he's still good he's still good he's still Harvest Church, if you know him to be good, let me hear you testify with your praise tonight. I know you're good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, so glad you're here with us tonight at the Harv. It's National Hot Dog Day. Did you know that? So we hooked you up. I hope you prayed over it. Amen. They're good hot dogs, good hot dogs. Hey, there has been a man who has been a staple on this platform for years. He came here in the year 2000. He has traveled throughout the nation and the world, helping create an atmosphere for a general of the faith, our pastor, to preach the word of the Lord. In the music community, he is living and legendary. He has helped to shape the lives and ambitions of so many musicians. We know him as an awesome organ player and singer and psalmist, but did you also know he's got a word in his belly? And he's here to deliver that word tonight. Please welcome Reverend Wendell Lowe. Thank you, sir. Love you, man of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. That ain't a suggestion. It's a commandment. Praise ye the Lord, everybody. Let everything that have breath open your mouth. Let the air fill your lungs and let out a great big hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. If he's been better to you, then you have been to yourself. Come on, clap those hands real good like the devil is in between them real fast and let's give God a praise he ain't heard yet. Come on, it's Wednesday night, but let's act like it's Sunday morning and give God some praise. Did y'all know Sunday is the only day of the week that's gonna make it into heaven? Y'all didn't hear me. I said, Sunday is the only day of the week that's going to make it into heaven. Somebody told me every day will be Sunday. So if we put some practice on tonight, let's act like it's not Wednesday. Let's act like it's Sunday tonight. Is that all right? Listen, I don't know if you're going to make it to Sunday. So while you're here right now, you might as well take a moment and give God some praise. Oh, don't look at me in that tone of voice. You know how good God has been to you. Open your mouth and praise him. Yeah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I do honor God tonight for this opportunity uh, to speak to you. And I need y'all to take me serious tonight. Is that all right? I need you to take me serious. I want to honor my MD, uh, uh, Chris Grace, who does a phenomenal job in setting the atmosphere. And all of the musicians, my teammates, Cameron Fontana, Robert Williams on bass, Chris Wright on drums, Marky on guitar acoustic Ray is not here tonight so I wanted to honor my teammates these are my teammates 
Without them, the atmosphere wouldn't shift like it does. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Okay, so Mama, Mama Helen, you standing up. I'm so glad you stood up because you in the Holy Ghost right now. Y'all see this? Remain standing. Y'all see that lady right there? Now I'm going to say something about her. She wrote down the names of every musician, and she prays for them and call us by name. And let me tell you, I wanted y'all to know who she was tonight because a lot of folks get blessed and kind of overlook the musicians at times because they don't think the Holy Ghost can move without music. And y'all ain't saying nothing back to me, huh? But amen. Amen. Musicians need a blessing too. They need somebody to intercede for them too. Amen. So if this band has been a blessing to you, tonight we're not only loving God, loving people, but we're loving God, loving the band. Come on, put those hands together. As a matter of fact, stand up on your feet and give the best band in the whole wide world a standing ovation. We salute you. And it's an honor for me to serve with you. It's an honor every week. You may be seated. The head of our music department, Pastor Chris Deacon. Pleasure to serve with you. It's such a pleasure. And of course, the, uh, the elders, the ecclesia, or I'm not going to call you by name because I don't know everybody's name. So rather than to get in trouble, I won't call no one's name. One name I can call, and that is that of the uh, senior elder, Elder Canfield, who is one of the elders who I met when I first arrived back in 2000. A man full of wisdom and grace, and I appreciate you. Amen. All of the elders, thank you so much. And of course, the angel, the set man of this house, the apostle himself. In his absence, let's love on him, Dr. Rod Parsley. If you're watching, man, I love you publicly, and I thank you so much for this opportunity. Amen. Are y'all ready for a word? I'm not, I'm not playing with you. I'm talking about a real word now, I'm a, a real word from the Lord tonight. Uh, I have been privileged to do some traveling uh, with Pastor um, down through the years and to assist him. Uh, it kind of felt like we were like Batman and Robin. I was Robin to his Batman. And uh, when we would go to places... And I would see him preach until he's coughing up blood. I would see him preach until they had to literally carry him out. I've seen the Lord do wondrous works through this man down through the years. And uh, we get him on Sunday. We get him throughout the week. But when he would go on the road, he would just give twice and three times as much because of his burden for souls and to sit there and actually feel the anointing reverberating off the platform many times serving with him I would have to be carried out too because when you're on the front line whoever's on the front line gonna get hit too y'all ain't saying nothing back to me yeah, right right and so it takes what you call a corporate anointing to serve one with another, right? Amen. And so his anointing enhanced my anointing. My anointing enhanced his anointing. And God got the glory. And the devil was just horrified. Amen. So as many years as I've traveled with him, I may say a few things that you've heard him say tonight. You know, you've been, you spend a lot of time around a person. Either their way is going to rub off on you or... You rub off on them and you start looking alike and you start talking alike. So you may hear a few things uh, that you've heard him say. I honor him by quoting him tonight. Amen. Are you ready for a word tonight? Come on, take those hands, lift them up for just a moment. And let's just worship him. 
before we go into the word of God. Let's just appreciate who the Lord is. Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor tonight. This is your house. So we invite your presence in this place. Have your way and bless your people. We be careful to give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Somebody shout glory. I want to call your attention tonight to the gospel according to St. John. And because I'll be reading a few scriptures, I'll just have you uh, remain seated. The gospel according to St. John, chapter number 21. And I will commence reading at verse number one. And then I'm going to skip backwards. I'll be kind of jumping all over the place tonight. Um, there's a lot of scriptures. I have a lot to say in a short time to say it. So I appreciate your prayers for me tonight. John 21 and 1, if you have it, respond by saying, I have the word. The word of the Lord reads us thus. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana Galilee in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, man, this is whack. I'm out of here. I'm going fishing. And they said back to him, well, don't leave us here. We're going to go with you. And that night, they immediately entered the ship, but they caught nothing. For just a few moments, I really want to talk to you about the state of the church. Right now, in my observation, this is kind of currently where most churches are, where they're saying, I want to go back to where I started. Mm-hmm. John 14, John chapter 14, 11 says, it's the words of Jesus. It says, believe me that I am in the father and the father in me or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son so father scripture I want you to look at a neighbor on either side of you and just look at him eyeball to eyeball and just tell him neighbor under the auspices of the Holy Ghost let me prophesy to you the subject for tonight it doesn't matter how you fall you'll still land on your feet doesn't matter how you fall you still land on your feet. My brothers and my sisters, it is my objective to prophetically enlighten you upon the reality of the current and future state of, of the church. And you can personally receive this word for yourself. Every year, the same thing happens. It is my observation that we as the church go through religious rhetoric where at the beginning, we have the tendency to start off very zealous, very strong and vigorous. But as we approach 
of the mid part and even the latter part of the year the church weakens where she forgets her purpose she forgets uh, reasoning and ultimately loses focus uh, if you look around today uh, we find that many church goers uh, are struggling with the decision to come to church and serve church uh, because they're overwhelmed by what they see even on social media oh my god i'm reminded of what god, uh what pastor said he says that the, the world is telling a lie very good while the church is telling the truth very bad oh my god and so what happens is that the church is beginning to weaken they are week in and week out we we're going to church we're shouting but we're going back to the same thing there is no deliverance there is no signs there's no wonders because the church has lost its purpose now let me tell y'all something my, my my dad was baptist and, and my mom is pentecostal so that makes me baptocostal and, 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 and back in the day, uh, coming up as a Baptist, uh, I recall that there used to be a time when we all knew how to pray. My God, help me preach in the house. Uh, we used to have what you call prayer meeting. Anybody remember that? <clears throat> now, prayer meeting is, sub is, is separate from Bible class because Bible class, you would talk the word, but prayer meeting, you were taught how to pray the word. Are you with me my, by myself? And we knew that because the Bible says that death and life is in the power of your tongue. And so we were taught that if you wanted a breakthrough in your finances, well, you know what? Put your Bibles down, lift your hands and repeat after me and say, I break all curses of poverty, lack debt and failure in the name of Jesus somebody say this I rebuke and cast out all spirits of the canker worm the palmer worm the caterpillar and the locusts that come to eat up my blessings in the name of Jesus according to Joel chapter 2 verse 25 somebody say father I pray in the name of Jesus, that you make all grace abound towards me, that I will have sufficiency in all things and abound to every good work, according to 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. And my brothers and sisters, if you were tormented by demonic activities, then you were, you were taught to say, I bind and rebuke all all hindering spirits of Satan in the name of Jesus according to 1st Thessalonians chapter 2 I lose myself in the name of Jesus according to Luke 13 and 15 and after a while it got good and sassy to you and you started using the power of your own words you begin to say I break and release myself from all curses of rejection in the name of Jesus I lose confusion against every satanic and demonic conspiracy against my life somebody help me shout this last one somebody say no weapon no weapon formed against me shall prosper the very gates and plans of hell shall not will not cannot prevail against me somebody give God a praise y'all ain't taking me serious back in the day be seated I got 10 minutes we had respect 
for the house of God. When I came in church, when we walked into the sanctuary, we couldn't speak loud. We had to talk, talk. We had to talk soft to each other and greet each other, oh my God, with a holy kiss. When I was coming up, the pulpit was the holy ground. And children could not play in the pulpit because this was where the mouth of God spoke. When I was coming up, we knew how to fellowship one with another. We would go to each other's homes and give them food or, or clean their homes for them. And we would fellowship one with another. It didn't matter how big or small your church was. No, I am the church. Oh my God. It didn't matter the eight walls, the four walls. The church was the church back in the day. And back in the day, my God, we focused on so not close. Now let me tell y'all something. I need to clear this up real quick because the truth of the matter is come as you are was meant to focus not on the outside but it was meant to focus on the Oh, on the inside oh my god I gotta teach it before I preach it and so I came to enlighten you upon this reality that something terrible has happened the Bible makes it unmistakably plain that in the last days the world will be filled with difficulties the likes of which have never before been seen in the history of mankind in fact the Holy Spirit was so committed to making sure that we understand what will occur in the last days that in the second book of Timothy chapter number three oh my god it is as if he pointed his prophetic finger to thousand years into the future and specifically foretells what will occur at the end it is Paul who writes these words by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost second Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 the Bible says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come notice that this verse begins by saying this no can I teach it while I preach it the word no is the Greek word genosko genosko the Greek word for knowledge but in this verse it is used in the present imperative tense which means it is a strong command to recognize that there is something that must be known must be recognized it must be acknowledged having this knowledge is not optional but rather mandatory and so the verse continues to say that know this that in the last days the word last in this verse comes from the Greek word eschatos eschatos which points to the ultimate end of a thing such as the last month of the year the last week of the month the last day of the week or the very extreme end of the age. In other words, the word eschatos doesn't merely describe the last days in general, but the very last of the last days. It was in it was used in classical Greek literature to depict a place furthest away, such as the very ends of the earth. Are you following me? And so, in this sense, it also also signifies something that is final with this word eschatos the Holy Spirit through Paul takes us right into the end of the age to enlighten our eyes oh my god and help us to see what the world environment will be like in the concluding moments of the age my brothers and my sisters Paul goes on to say that parallel times will mark that final age and, and so perilous is the, the Greek word chalepos a word used to describe ugly words that 
when spoken are hurtful and emotionally hard to bear. It is uh, also used in various pieces of literature to depict wild, vicious, uncontrollable animals that are unpredictable and dangerous. It always carries the idea of an action place person or thing that is harsh, harmful, and filled with high risk. And so the Bible declares that in the last days perilous times shall come. Can I read on? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. I wish I could preach, but I got to keep moving. Men shall be covetous. Men shall be boasters. Men shall be proud, blasphemers, disobedient obedient to parents now let me pause right there because the other day I was in Walmart you see I was in Walmart good God I got five minutes I was in Walmart and I was standing in line getting ready to pay for my items but two lines over I heard this kid shouting and screaming for no apparent reason and I'm like good God Almighty is that parent going to do something about that kid crying in public you know well where I'm from my mother gave me a look that's all she had to do she didn't have to say anything it was the expression on her face and if the look didn't work then she gave me the finger she said come here boy uh huh yes 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 and if the finger didn't work then she grabbed me by my shirt and told me words like this if you act up in public then I'm going to get you in public. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. Okay, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, y'all know the word, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. The Bible says, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Unfortunately, it is unfortunate and quite embarrassing to acknowledge that not only are our lost brothers and sisters in the world are struggling with these God awful character traits but the church folks as well and for many of us the struggle is not only external but it is also internal uh, there is a spiritual fight going on but also a psychological fight uh, as well uh, an anonymous poet wrote the poem entitled two natures and I quote uh, it says two natures beat between my breasts one is foul and the other is blessed one I love and the other I hate but the one I feed will dominate Another writer by the name of George Bernard Shaw, he said, a Native American elder once described his own inner struggles in this manner. He said, inside of me are two dogs. One of the dogs is mean and evil. The other dog is good. The mean dog fights the good dog all the time. When asked which dog wins, he reflects for a moment and replies, the one I feed the most. This, my brothers and sisters, describe the current state of most of the church. But I got good gospel news for you tonight. Look at a neighbor, just tell them, neighbor, it doesn't matter how you fall. It doesn't even matter how long you've been falling. Oh my God, you will land on your feet. And we at the halfway mark. If y'all can just stay with me just a few moments, I'll be going to my seat. Let's look in the text now. Uh, one of the most significant periods of the church calendar, but happens to be the least celebrated, is the 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead. Most preachers preach about the three years of Jesus' ministry, but it's actually three years and 40 days. But now here in the text, it talks about after Jesus rose from the dead, he walked and he talked in places 
place where he had previously ministered. Jesus was seen in his restored body by the thousands and he healed many and he continued to preach and he continued to love and then he ascended into heaven taken up in the sky which also was witnessed by others. My brothers and my sisters, we really need to think more about these last 40 days and the significance of the ascension. Jesus' birth, my brothers and sisters, had been according to scripture. His miracles had shown his power. His preaching had taught the world wisdom. His persecution and death had fulfilled prophecies. The mere fact that he conquered death was an astonishing miracle. But his ascension to heaven, his bodily rise to be with the Father at the throne, the mystery of rejoining the Godhead more than any detail of these other manifestations simply confirms his divinity. For a hundred people that will shout with me on this revelation, I came to tell you that in these 40 days, Jesus simply showed the church that he actually lived again. He showed the church he showed the church that he actually lived again. Now, there's something, uh, thank you so much. Uh, oh my God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, there's something uh, biblically significant about the number 40. I just got word from pastor that I can take my time, so we're going to have church. Is that all right? <laughs> all right. There's something significant uh, about the number 40. 40 appears 146 times in the Bible. Can I give you a few examples? Noah spent 40 days in the wilderness. Moses spent 40 days on the mountain. And it took Jonah, watch this, uh, 40 days to get to Nineveh. Uh, my brothers and sisters, it's recorded that, that at the end of a 40-day fast, Jesus was tempted of the devil. And lastly, uh, it was 40 days between the resurrection and the ascension. Now, now watch this, watch this. Uh, usually, the number 40 signifies the end of testing, uh, the trials and probation. But let me enlighten you upon this reality that it also signifies provision for the promise. Oh, I'm preaching, Ben, you saying amen. So now you have the very acts of Jesus as demonstrations to follow. Uh, look at a neighbor, slap my high five and just tell him, neighbor, we're about to demonstrate how to get a demon straight. Oh, I think you need to tell somebody else. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't know about you, but I'm about to demonstrate how to get a demon straight. If you know you got the Holy Ghost on the inside, let's take a moment, jump up and shout. This demon is going down. He's going, he's going down. He's going down. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. So as I make my first attempt to close, let's look into part B of the text. The Bible says uh, that there was a conversation going on between Jesus and his disciples uh, when he asked them in the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter number 16. He said, but whom say ye that I am? Let's cut to the chase. Uh, we know what everybody else said, but let's, see, let's focus on what Peter said. Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. It's wonderful to know that in this scripture that uh, we don't just know God, but God knows us too. Are you with me by myself? 
He says, uh, uh, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, upon this revelation, I will build my church, and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Uh, watch this. I will give unto my church, this is Jesus talking, the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, and whatsoever my church shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever my church shall loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So in the text, John chapter 14, I got a lot of word in me. The Bible says, Jesus said, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works say. For verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Let's read it slow now. He that believeth. On me it is conditional uh, he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father uh, he went on to say and whatsoever you shall ask in my name that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son uh, my brothers and sisters the church may be falling uh, but I came to prophesy to the church and let you know she will land on her feet hey, can I I don't want to just help you I want to hope you can I hope you right now stop believing what you're seeing and start seeing what you actually believe Look at your name and say, you got to have faith. You, you got to have faith. You got to have faith. Because the Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Back up low. Okay. Uh, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him back up low say it again he that cometh to God must believe that he is Paul's he that cometh to God must believe that he is repeat he that cometh to God must believe that he is say it one more time low I think they almost got it he that cometh to God must believe that he is he is not a genie in a lamp where you rub and get three wishes he is is not a Santa Claus where you sit on his lap with a whole list of things you want. He is not the wizard of Oz, a short man behind a curtain magnifying his voice through a magnifying uh, microphone. He is the supreme deity. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. He is Jehovah Nisi, me my banner. He is. He is who he is. Well, you got to believe it first prerequisite you got to believe that he is and let me tell y'all something watch this here come the revelation you can't just believe to be saved y'all ain't saying that we confess with your mouth the lord jesus believe in your heart that god is raised from the dead you shall be saved and you confess and that's where most folks stop okay be, that's where you stop because truth of the matter is yes that is a prerequisite to get into heaven but here's the thing you don't stop there you got to believe that in the book of Genesis when God the Father got the Son and God the Holy Ghost said let us make man man is the only you know, he's the only thing that God made with his hands are y'all with me by myself Everything else he spoke, but he said, this one here, I'm going to put my hands on it. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm so glad he's got his hands on me. He's got his hands on me. 
He says, let us make man in our image, in our imagio day, in our image after our likeness, and man shall have dominion. All right? Let me tell y'all something. If God created the worlds with his words, then what do you think we have the ability to do if we're made in his image and after his likeness? Look at your neighbor and say, you got to be careful what you say. Because what you say, whether it's positive or negative, it will materialize because you're literally creating your world with your words. Push somebody's shoulder and say, stop cussing yourself and start blessing yourself. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying that. John 7 says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers, I got to go on, of living water. Mark chapter 16, uh, verses 17 through 19, I'm talking about the church now. Uh, he says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, this is not just believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, but watch this. He says, in my name, come on y'all, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, I'm talking about the church, nothing shall harm them. If you have this talking about you, then why are you sitting in defeat? If you have this describing you, then why won't you do what God told you to do? If you have this word describing who you are, then greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What you doing running from the devil? You should be chasing him instead of him. Should be. Should be. And so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, sat on the right hand uh, of the Father, Holy Ghost. Uh, thank you. Hold on, y'all. This thing is cut off. Okay, we're good. All right. So listen, I want you to prophesy to your neighbor one more time and just tell them, as long as you stay connected to the church, you will land on your feet. Now I tell them, I command you, Listen, 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 listen. Come on, come on, come, come on, Chris. Just give me something. Look at the neighbor, shake their hand like you're going to shake it up and tell them, I command you to be healed. I command you to be delivered. I command you to be set free. I command you to be empowered. I command you to be due, endued with the power of the Holy Ghost. Speak those things that be not as though they were. I don't care how bad the situation looks. Talk to it and tell it you got to change. I don't mean now, but I mean right now. You got the shift. I'm talking to the church, but I'm talking to you too. My last final two points. In the gospel according to St. Matthew, watch this, around the 14th chapter, the Bible talks about after Jesus had fed 5,000 people with two fish, five loaves of bread, right? He tells his disciples, watch this, he says, I want you who was there and they saw the multiplication of the fish and five loaves of bread. The disciples were there and they saw, okay? Re keep that point. They were there and they saw. All right, somebody say it again. Somebody say, they were there and they saw. Okay, so he, he, he told them after he had fed the 5,000 people, all right? This church holds 5,200. So Jesus fed 5,000 people, 
Y'all hear what I'm saying? And then he told the disciples, go uh, in the boat and I'll meet you on the other side. Y'all know the word, right? And so when he told them, go, I'll meet you on the other side, he didn't go with them because he had to tend to the people and send them home. Uh, Y'all know the story. And so what happens next? A storm arose while they were in the middle part of the sea. The storm rose and when they were in the storm, they began to grow fearful. In their fear, in the midst of the storm, here comes an image of Jesus walking on the water. Y'all know the story. And uh, uh, everybody began to look and they said, oh my God, I'm scared. Jesus got us out here and he ain't come with us. What we gonna do now? Uh, Peter said, Lord, if that be you, then bid me to come. That's what he said. He said, if that be you, then bid me to come. And so Jesus, the, the image of Jesus said to him, he says, come on out. The disciples and Peter were in the boat. Watch this. The disciples, why were they called disciples? Because Jesus was teaching them, right? Okay, he's the rabbi, they're the disciples. He was teaching them. He was always saying, come here, let me show you something. He's always teaching you. He's always in the midst of your soul. He's always teaching you. He's always saying, come here, let me show you something. Y'all y'all ain't saying nothing. Huh? He's always teaching, but here's the difference. The difference is there were disciples in the boat, but there was only one believer. told y'all take me serious there were disciples in the boat who saw everything Jesus did but there was only one believer Elder Canfield at any given time if I'm off you come take this mic and you take it away all right one believer all disciples they were all in the boat. They served the people they fed the people they got in the boat they left Jesus didn't even know who he really was. Huh? All them disciples, but only one believer. How many folk come to church who ain't believing? Y'all ain't got nothing to say here. I preach by myself. All these folk coming to church, hearing the word every week, but ain't no believers. Maybe a few. That's why they call it the faithful few. Are y'all with me by myself? Peter said, if it be you, then bid me to come. Jesus says, come. That's all he said, come. And Peter stepped out on the water. And the Bible says that as long as he kept his eyes on the Lord, he did not sink. But the moment he looked down, look at your neighbor and say, don't look down. The moment he looked down, he began to sink. But even while you're sinking, you can look back up and say, Lord, save me. And he said, I, I thought you'd never ask. Give me your hand. Touch your name and say, stop being so prideful and ask for help. Mm -hmm. I got one more revelation and then we're going to go on. In the book of Exodus, Elder Allen, this one's for you. Watch this. In the book of Exodus, around the 33rd chapter, watch this, watch this. The, uh, Moses was having a conversation with the Lord. He said, show me your glory. I'm done. Praise him can come because I'm done. He says, show me your glory. Church folk, show me your glory. Right? The Lord responded by saying, I cannot show you my face because no man can look in the face of God and live. Pastor Rod, I hope you're watching right now because I'm about to blow your mind because it blew my mind when I saw it. Watch this. He says, what I will do is I will place you in the cliff of the rock. And then he says, I'm going to put my hand over you. And when I put my hand over you, I'm going to walk past you. And when I walk past you, I'll remove my hand. 
And when I remove my hand, I'll let you see the backside. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. And so he removed his hand and the Lord allowed him to see his backside. Here's where I dropped the mic. The gospel according to St. John chapter 1 says, it says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. Okay? First prerequisite, you got to believe in order to land on your feet. Right? Second, watch this. Watch this. If God told Moses... He says, I'll let you see my hinder part because nobody can look in the face of God and live. And then John says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Then one would stand the reason that when you look in the Bible, you have to die. Y'all going to get it next week. <laughs> because no man can look in the face of God and live. <laughs> Pastor Parsons say, you can't have your life. You can't have, keep have his life and have your life too stand on your feet I'm done I thought I was going to hoop but I, I guess it wasn't that kind of anointing did y'all get that I guarantee you that if you believe and continue to look face to face in the word you will die But when you die, you shall live. Because Paul said what? I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, not I, but the Christ that lives inside of me, right? So in order for the church to get in her bounce back, she got to die. Everything about you has got to die. The Bible says, and I quoted it earlier, I said, death and life is in the power of tongue. You can't just read the Bible, you got to read the Bible, right? So many folks, when they quote that word, they say life and death is in the power of tongue. That's not how it's written. It's written death and life are in the power of your tongue. Why does death become first before life? Because when you hold dual citizenship, then everything is diametrically opposed and mutually exclusive one toward another. Therefore, in order to go up, you got to humble yourself, right? In order to get, if, if order to get you got to give, right? In order to live, you got to die! I thought I'd give y'all something to eat. Lift your hands for just a moment. The church is falling, but I promise you, she will land on her feet. I don't care what other communities, other religions are saying throughout social media, the church will not go down. And you best believe when he's coming back, He's coming back for his church without a spot or wrinkle. If there's anybody that's been inspired by this word and felt like Peter when he says, I'm going back, I'm going fishing, I'm going back. Watch what happened in that text. He went back to do what he was doing before Jesus called him. And guess what? He was not successful. When God's hand is on your life, 
You can't go back to doing what you used to do. You can't. Because many are called, but few are chosen. And if you're one of them chosen ones, Elder Canfield, you can come help me. If you're one of them chosen ones, I want you to take a step out of the aisle and make your way up to the front. And let's get the church restored. Let's get revival back in the house. Let's let the church land on her feet. I don't have to count from one to three. You already know your current state. Some folks are struggling, battling in their minds, spiritual and psychological. God says, speak peace to the confusion and tell it to shut up. If you resist the devil, he will flee from it. Everybody else that's standing, lift your hands and begin to worship the Lord and know that his presence is here to shift you like a chiropractor, shift your back back into place. He's shifting you. It never hurts so good. Come on and tell the Lord, thank you for giving me yet another chance to get back in my place. Preacher, you should be preaching. Singer, you should be singing. Musician, you should be playing. Uh, prayer warriors, you should be praying. Get back in your place so the church can land on her feet and not on her back. Keep your hands elevated and let's give God praise. Yeah, let's thank God for this word from Elder Wendell Lowe. Come on. Come on, somebody heard something tonight. It's going to propel you to where it is that God has for you. Hallelujah. I want everybody to stay right where you are. Stay right where you are just for a moment. Because there's somebody in this house. You came here tonight and you were uncertain about something. You were uncertain about where you stood with God. We're going to take care of that right now. There's no reason for anybody to leave this place uncertain of whether or not your sins are forgiven, uncertain of where you're going to spend eternity. We're going to pray. God's going to hear, and he's going to answer. Hallelujah. You say, well, I already prayed that prayer. I'm going to challenge you to recommit yourself to the Lord tonight by praying this prayer once again. Somebody's here that's going to pray that prayer for the very first time. Somebody's here who said, well, I prayed that prayer a long time ago, but I haven't been walking in fellowship with God since then. I want to ask all of us to pray this prayer together. Pray it out loud, loud enough that your own ears hear what it is that your mouth is saying. Let's pray together. Pray it boldly. Pray it loudly. Pray it decisively. Somebody said, we're going to bow our heads. No, with everybody's head up and everybody looking around. Hallelujah. Let's pray this prayer together. Oh God, I come to you tonight. I acknowledge my need of a Savior. Jesus, come into my heart. Wash me clean. Make me new inside. I believe that you're alive. That God raised you from the dead. I receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you, God, for loving me, for forgiving me, and for showing me how to live. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody ought to celebrate. Somebody ought to take a minute and thank God. Ah, hallelujah. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, there's a card there in the pew in front of you. And you can fill it out and just leave it right there at your seat. And we'll collect it later and we'll continue to pray for you and believe God with you and expect that God will do the work on a daily basis in your life that he desires to do. For those of you that are here, we're believing God with you. That you're going to that your life is going to accelerate in God. Yeah. You're going to experience a greater sense of fulfillment and satisfaction than you've ever experienced before as a result of God positioning you to fulfill your purpose. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Elder Lowe, I want to thank you for delivering that word to us tonight. We bless you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, y'all didn't know he could preach. I knew he could preach, but I hadn't heard him for about 15 years. I'm just glad to get caught up. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Don't forget to pray for Pastor Parsley this week and his family, our first family. It's our responsibility to do that. As a matter of fact, while you're standing there, let's do that right now. Yes. Heavenly Father, thank you for our pastor, Dr. Rod Parsley. Thank you, Lord God, for strengthening his physical body to do everything that you have for him to do. I thank you, Lord God, for strengthening his voice. I thank you for magnifying and amplifying his voice that he will accomplish all that you have called him and created him to do. I thank you, Lord God, for surrounding every member of our first family with your Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord God, that Brother Oscar Oscoff is healed in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for encouraging him, for letting him know that you're near him and you'll never leave him nor forsake him. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for these my brothers and sisters. Thank you that the remainder of this week they will experience your presence in a supernatural way. Ah, God. And though they may feel as though they're falling, they have your assurance that they will indeed land on their feet. In the name of Jesus, we bless you and thank you. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, Pastor Chris Deegan. Tell us what's next. Well, to our online congregation, so glad that you've been with us. We'll see you on Sunday morning. God bless you. Well, saints, so glad to see you tonight. We'll see you Sunday.